Thank you for joining us this evening, everyone. I am Mimi Barnes. I'm Communications and Outreach Coordinator for Region 3. I am joined tonight by Rob Klippel. He's on the left on the screen and Matt Clary on the right on the screen. Um, I can tell you <laughs> they are fun to work with. Um, I get texts uh, late in the evening of the great sh long range shots that Rob makes. He's a true gun lover. They both are. Um, Matt, you are one of the most jovial um, energyless people I've ever met. It's a true pleasure to work with both of them this evening. Um, I will ask everybody that if you have questions during our time together, uh, at the bottom of your screen, you should see a little question, uh, Q and A to please uh, ask all questions through Q&A. And I'll either interrupt these two, or I'll just, if it's something simple, I'll just type the answer for everybody to see. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to the two of you. Thanks a lot. Well, good evening. Uh, welcome to our very first virtual gun cleaning class we've ever done. So this is gonna be interesting. Uh, like Mimi said, my name is Captain Matt Clary. I'm with the law enforcement division, but I'm also a hunter education coordinator for region three. Our office is out of the Crossville office uh, and uh, we're, we have 24 counties here in our region. And uh, so I'm over the hunter education classes that go on. And uh, we pretty much thought, you know, with all the restriction we've had in the last year, we, we thought we'd bring a class to you. We're normally used to teaching this class in front of people and uh, at our hunter education classes, as well as our outreach classes, like Become an Outdoors Woman. We also do a toys camp in the summer with the youth. And, uh, and just off and on, we're just teaching people how to shoot guns pretty much. So I'll give you a little bit of background about me and then I'll let Rob talk about himself. But pretty much I have been around guns since probably I was five or six years old, been shooting since then. So about 35, 40 years we've, I've been shooting. Um, I like to shoot every different kind of gun. I'm not just a one type gun shooter. I like to shoot rifles, pistols, shotguns, traps, ski, all those types of things. And with that comes maintenance on guns. So I've had to learn over the years how to, how to clean these guns and take care of them. Um, and uh, I'm more of what you say, a weekend warrior. Uh, I like to shoot a lot of different guns, but I don't shoot all the time. So I'm more of like shoot, get them cleaned as quick as I can, get them back in the safe ready for the next time I shoot. Rob on the other hand is, is kind of my opposite. He's more of a pre precise shooter, uh, long range. You know, If it's under 500 yards, that's too short for him. I'll let him talk about that, but uh, Rob, if you could talk about what, what you're into and kind of shooting you like. Hey, I'm Rob Clipple. I'm WMA manager. I have about 18 areas here in Region 3, mostly waterfowl. I've, Matt and I have talked together, like you said, all the outreach programs, BOW toys, and the firearms part. I, I started doing long range, I guess, 15, 18 years ago. We were shooting out to 1,000. And that's just as far, that's as far as we could go where we went. Now we have a mile range, so we're going to start teaching long range to a mile, which is a lot more fun. So I shoot, like Matt said, I can shoot at my house up to 500. So I shoot all the time. And I, the guns that we use to shoot these long range distances are expensive, nice guns. And you want to keep them clean. And that's Matt and I joke around. We teach the other classes. It may take me two hours to get all the copper out of a long range rifle but you have to get it out and make it accurate for the next time. So Matt's sort of gonna go over, if you're gonna clean a gun once or twice a year, how to do it. I'm gonna be more of, I clean guns every week. I'm shooting every week and my guns are, they have to be really clean. All the copper has to be out. And, and like this, this class is mainly gonna be focused toward pistol, but we're really, everything that we talk about in the beginning of this class is pretty much gonna be what we're gonna talk about in the rifle it's just gonna, we're gonna adapt it to that, that type of a gun. Uh, but pretty much everything's gonna go along with it. And, and, and Rob will talk a little bit more about uh, rifles in the next class that we have after this one. But uh, pretty much what we're gonna start off is just, is the basics. It's, you know, one, two, three. We're gonna talk about everything that leads up to that. Some of the things that you're gonna need to, uh, to use to clean that. All the different, and we're not gonna go over every different option that's out there because there's so many. There's an array of, of different types of tools to use and jags and rods and different things, but we're gonna go over what we think you'll need to know if you're a weekend warrior, but then also you might get a little bit of a touch on if you're gonna be a more precise uh, shooter and need to clean it a little bit better. So first thing is the question is, when do you clean a gun? Uh, that's always the first question. Should I clean it after every shooting session? 
Should I clean it after every time I touch it? Not necessarily. Uh, it's going to depend on what you're doing. If you're just going out and doing a, uh, a sighting in session with a rifle before hunting season, uh, you definitely want to shoot that and then bring it home and clean it that evening. Um, that, that, unless it gets wet or anything like that, you probably don't have to clean it that evening. You could clean it the next day, but you definitely need to clean it within 24 hours of shooting that gun. Um, and then also, if you're using it for hunting, it's going to be a different, whole different thing, depending on the weather. Uh, if it's been raining or snowing or if it's been muddy, any of those kinds of, if you get dirty, if you drop it on the ground, if you've been in a lot, real heavy brush, those kinds of things, you want to make sure that that barrel is going to be clean and all those, and the action is going to be clean before you go out to your next session. And then lastly, if it's been sitting in a safe and you haven't touched it all year, <clears throat> I would probably check it every year, at least once a year to check and see if it rusts, uh, if there's any, any kind of dust or, or anything that gets in the barrel or the action, you just want to make sure you Look at that and then you may want to run run something through the barrel of the action before you go out to shoot so with that uh before we start uh, cleaning a gun i'll have rob talk a little bit about safety uh that's we're i'm the hunter safety guy that's what we want to teach you guys and so he's going to talk a little bit about like where to where to clean it and the things that you want to think about before you start cleaning it up. if you can at all you need to clean it from the breech the back and something, I mean, you can't with a revolver, of course. There's no way to do it. You're going to have to clean it from the muzzle. They have muzzle protectors you can put here where you don't hit the rifling to damage the crown. Um, same thing, some of them you can, that's a double action where the cylinder comes out. This is a single action. And if that cylinder comes out, you want to take it out and clean the cylinders also and clean the barrel. If you can at all, like I said, clean from the rear, you can take this bolt out. And if anybody has one of these rugers, they know they're a choy to put back together. That's gonna to take me like an hour this evening. <laughs> but this one you can clean from the from the back, the, from the breech, which you always wanna do if you can, especially a rifle, but pistols also. And Matt's got... Yeah, and, and also I want you to notice the way Rob's pointing his, his gun. He's pointing it away from me in a safe direction. We also want to talk about where should you be cleaning your guns. Probably don't want to be doing it at the uh, coffee table where all the kids are running around at night and you've got unsafe things going on. The kids, you may have to get up and go do something and the kids will get to the gun or get to a part and then you're, then you're in trouble. So make sure you find a good place to do that and always point that gun in a safe direction. Before and then, then before we do any kind of cleaning, like Rob did, you want to make sure that it's unloaded. So we're actually going to physically and visually check and see if it's unloaded. We definitely want to do that before cleaning of any type. Pistols, you know, we talk about gun vices or gun benches. Pistols don't normally, they make a small bench or a vice for a pistol, but you don't normally need one. Uh, Rob's got an old t-shirt here you can lay down, something that you're not going to worry about. They have gun mats that you can lay down and, and lay all the parts out there. Just something that's going to keep keep protect the guns parts as well as protect whatever you're cleaning it on if you're on a bench or something like that. So keep that in mind. Um, uh, and Rob talked about, he's got two revolvers and a semi-automatic, he's able to take apart. The main thing about these guns, this is a Glock actually. Let's check to see if it's unloaded. You actually have to pull the trigger to be able to take this gun apart. And you gotta, what we're gonna try to do on each gun is try to what we call field stripping. Okay, so the barrel comes off uh, and then the slide comes off and you wanna clean all these parts inside and out. And we'll go through that in a minute, but we just wanna talk about how you want to break those down as much as you can. Now, some of these guns like this, this, uh, this Ruger here, very hard to take apart and put back together. Okay. You can read the owner's manual and even with practice, Rob and I, it's hard for us to put that gun back together. It's just a tough one to do. So if you don't feel comfortable, definitely take it to a uh, gunsmith or somebody that knows what they're doing. So that way they can put it back together and it's not going to be an unsafe The new gun. Rugers come with it. They, call it an easy takedown. So they're, they've known for years, it's hard to put them back together. So of course it's about a hundred dollars more, but it has an easy takedown. Yeah. So and this, come and this apart is, and go back together. Yeah, and this is a 22 caliber, by the way. I know a lot of people like to ask, that's a 22. Uh, this is a- 44 Magnum. 44 Magnum, that's a big gun there. This is a 454 Casual. That's, that's, that's a bear gun, essentially. <laughs> and this is actually a 357 Sig Glock, because this is actually the one we carry on, uh, on duty. So uh, we'll just, just wanted to let you know what we've got in front of us. So let's, let's break down a few things real quickly about 
different kinds of cleaners and oils and those kinds of things that are out there. I'll, I'll kind of go over like the Walmart guy that was want to save some money. That's me. I'm over here. So I'm a, I'm a guy that's want to find a spray that'll do everything, right? This has got cleaner. This has got oil. Uh, CLP stands for clean, lubricate, and prevent. Okay, so that's, or preserve, I'm sorry. So that's going to be a spray on, wipe off, you're going to go. Okay, that's for your weekend warriors that just need to clean off a shotgun after going out and shooting some clays um, or, or a rifle that you just sighted in. Okay, uh, this does have oil on it, but I always want to use some type of oil. Now, there's all kinds. This is a Hops brand oil. Uh, this is actually a Lucas gun oil. And this is some type of gun slick oil that I've, that I've found over the years. And they even have it in a spray. You can spray them down with oil. I always want to do, after cleaning, do a light uh, film, a light, light covering coating of oil. Um, so that's, that's some of the stuff. Now, Rob's going to go over what kind of the stuff that he uses on his high-end guns. And this is more for rifles. Now, pistols don't copper as bad as rifles. They're not as fast. So I did bring a 44 and the 454. They're what, do you, what do you mean by copper? The in your rifling, the bolts are going down the barrel fast enough that it presses the copper into the rifle, and you're gonna have to get it out. That's that's when those are a lot harder to use because they're not gonna take copper out. If you get some of this, like that Montana Extremes for copper, all these are for copper. So they'll take out the powder filing too. When you look down the barrel at first, it's just gonna be black where you have the powder. You get the powder out with a couple patches, then you're gonna see the copper in there. And to get that copper out, it takes quite a while. It takes a lot of scrubbing and going back and forth with a good cleaner. Cause some, like you use the CLRC, CLP. CLP, yeah. Or hops, you know, or hops. Hops, you hops is something that everybody's used uh, probably over the years. Rob laughs when I say we use hops, but that is something that I know you all are probably using. The number one thing I have that I that it irks us though is when people say they spray their gun down with WD-40. That may be something your grandpa did or your dad did. I don't recommend it, okay? WD-40 is not for guns, okay? I understand it fixes everything as well as duct tape, but it's not good for your guns. So don't use it on your guns. Use something just for guns. Keep, just keep that in mind. WD-40 actually evaporates. So if you put it on a gun and you put it in your safe and it evaporates, it's not protected anymore. Exactly. So keep that in mind. Stay away from that. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is, is some of the different uh, types of cleaning tools, I guess you could say. Uh, rods, jags, some of the kits that are out there. Um, this is something you could use for a pistol. It's just an aluminum type uh, rod with a, with a brass brush on the end. And you would use this to, to clean out the barrel, obviously. You use that. Rob's got a, a jag over here with a patch on it. Use brass jags so they don't hurt the rifling. Yep, brass is always good for guns. Uh, steel is not as good. Uh, I know that it's out there. There's a lot of different kits out there that have, like I've got one here that's got a, a that's steel? That's aluminum. Oh, that's aluminum, that's good, aluminum. But a lot of them are made of steel. I do have some in my uh, kit over here that do have some steel rods. Some of the old military guns, that's what they came with, was, was steel uh, cleaning rods. And they're, of course they last a while, they're just, they will scratch the inside of your uh, a barrel. So keep that in mind. So aluminum is good, brass is good, uh, and those kinds of things. You always want to use brushes to start with, get the, the heavy fouling out of there, as much copper as you can, and then follow up with the rag at the end. Like I said, we'll get, or a patch at the end, we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, there's a lot of cleaning kits out there, and I know a lot of people love getting kits because they got everything in them, okay? And I've got one here, probably seen this before. It's a good wooden box. It's got all your brushes, uh, some, some cotton type uh, uh, jags here, patches, rods, brushes. Uh, these little brass brushes, like they're almost like a toothbrush for a gun. They work really good. You want, definitely want to have some of those. That's a good one for your home. They also make mobile ones, okay, that you can take out in the field. They, instead of a rod, they have a cable and that cable system actually hooks into a handle and it comes with some brushes and some jags and you can actually pull that through the barrel and clean that out now and I know you just went to Canada this last year and what happened while you were there yeah when we were hunting of course with rifles with the rain and us walking miles and on four-wheelers of course they were in a case in the four-wheeler this walking the barrels got full of bark and debris so we'd have to come home and clean them every every night yeah. we were in some downpours and 
just walking a lot and getting a lot of debris in there. So, so that's what uh, a mobile kit would be good to have. Maybe throw in your truck or in your pack if you're going to be hunting for a day or two, <clears throat> just to have something to, to run through there just in case. Um, they're, they're not the greatest thing to have at home because they're not as sturdy and as heavy duty. And they're not going to do the job that you want to do for a real good thorough cleaning. But they're going to be pretty good for, for something like that getting the mud out of a barrel or some bark. And exactly. the cable on that, you have to be careful that cable steel. So you don't want it scratching all the way up your rifling. Your rifling should be smooth. It should look like glass when it's done, when you're cleaning it. It should actually be shiny. And you don't want any scratches or imperfections in there. And we'll talk in the next class with rifles about how you get all those imperfections out. Yeah, how important that is with, with uh, more precise long distance shooting. Um, and lastly, there are some things out there called sonic cleaners, and those are or ultrasonic cleaners. Those are electronic, uh, almost like the, a lot of people clean jewelry with them. Um, any kind of metals you have, you can use those for. So guys out there and your wives don't want you to buy one, say, hey, I'm going to buy you a jewelry cleaner and use it for your gun parts. That, that's a great idea. Just say next time you need to get something, you know, a new toy. Uh, but anyway, they're, they're very good for uh, just taking all your parts. If it's been a real long time shooting, long, long range session, uh, got a lot of buildup. You can throw those in there with some cleaner and it warms up the water and actually agitates all the chemicals and all the things. I don't know. It's, it's magical. I think is actually what it is. It's magic. <laughs> but it does work very well to get those, those hard to reach uh, places on some of those guns. I have a lot of shotguns. We have like 100, around 100 shotguns in my region that we use for 100 Ed. And I'm always getting new guns back and forth from classes. And you can imagine when you got a class of 50 to 100 kids, they shoot three to five times. That's a lot of carbon fouling. So when I get those guns in, I like to take them, take them down and throw all those parts in a, in a cleaner and let them go for a while. You know, let them go for 30 minutes or so and then come back, wipe them down, uh, uh, oil them up and put them back together. So. That's one thing, you, if you got a lot of guns and you wanna save a little time scrubbing, that's one thing you can do, um, something new anyways. So <clears throat> the sonic cleaners are also really good at kept suppressors. 22 suppressors are just, wow, 22s are just so messy and nasty with the powder fouling and the carbon. But those suppressors get built up carbon and you can take those and put them in a sonic cleaner. It saves you a lot of time. Yep, so anything that's gonna, accumulate dust, accumulate carbon, all those things that, like I said, 22s are, are notorious for that. It's, it's nice and easy to be able to use something like that to help. Um, so I think we've covered just about everything that we're gonna cover prior to cleaning one. So let's, let's, let's do a quick cleaning on one. Let's talk about a revolver first. Revolver, of course, we're gonna have to clean it from the front as we don't have a choice. Right. So, and no, we're not going to use it. You don't want to use my CLP rod? <laughs> now, if I was done this, I'd spray it down, <laughs> clean it and be done with it. Now, Rob is going to show you how he does it though. So put a little bit of cleaner on a patch. That's mainly what he's doing here. And all these have a bunch of um, ammonia in them. And ammonia is just to cut the copper. Exactly. So he's going to run that through the barrel. You actually put it in here. You let it sit for 10 minutes. Oh, let's take a break and let it sit for 10 minutes. Oh, a 10 minute break. And you're going to clean the cylinder it. also because it's going to be. Yeah, so the cylinder is where the actual round sits, okay? And that's where the ignition happens and is inside that cylinder. So all that carbon fouling is, is, is accumulated inside those cylinders. So you can see, I don't know if you can see on that patch. It's dirty. It's pretty dirty. And he talks about how clean his guns are. I don't think so. But anyways. So he's going to get another patch and just keep cleaning that until it comes out pretty clean. I mean, to me, that would be clean enough. But Rob, now he's going to do a little more in-depth cleaning than I would. But no, it's true, though. Uh, even with, like, say, this Glock, of course, this barrel, I can hold in my hand and I can really get into it and, and clean it out and look down the barrel and, and really see if it's clean. Now, this one's a little bit harder to do that. And you've got six of them to clean. You don't have just one. You've got to clean all six cylinders as well as the barrel on that. And a lot of these, it'll say on all these different cleaners, you leave it in there for 10 or 15 minutes. You don't leave this stuff overnight. As it says, very strong vapors. Yes, it's 
ammonia. Caution. Caution. Yeah, be careful. Some of these are kind of caustic and uh, the, the more higher end, stronger ones are something you want to be careful with. Some of these like the CLP and the hops and the things that you'll get at most of your stores around here are not as strong, but you definitely want to be careful with them because they're all chemicals. So once you've cleaned out all the areas, then you might want to go with a, a rag and put some cleaner on it and clean all the outside. So anything on the outside of this slide, I'd want to clean. Um, pipe cleaners are good to get in some of those really hard to reach places. Q-tips, steal some of your wives' Q-tips out, out of the bathroom, get in those, those small places. Um, and then you're just gonna do a quick look over, make sure everything looks good. Um, and then you're gonna essentially put it back together. But before that, you definitely wanna put some oil down the barrel, wouldn't you? You do, and you, the, these cleaners, like I said, leave them, you know, say on the bottle, 10 minutes, whatever. Then you're gonna take a clean, dry patch and run through there to get that cleaner out. And then you're gonna use some kind of oil, to, a light oil to go through the barrel. I mean, these are stainless, but still, yep. they need some oil. When metal rubs against metal, that causes issues. So uh, now Glocks, uh, a lot of people like Glocks and they recommend different oiling. Of course, they want you to oil the barrel all the way around. I've, I've, everything on this barrel I'll oil, not much, just a light, light uh, film of it. And then there's like three spots on this place that you're supposed to oil. And it'll say that in the owner's guide, in the owner's manual. And that's another point I want to make. Definitely read that owner's manual. I know most of us guys are like, owner's manual, throw that out while we get our gun. No, look over that thing. I know there's a lot of cautions in there, things like that. Don't point the barrel at your head. Yeah, we understand those kinds of things. But there are some things in there that you may need to know. Okay, so on a Glock, there's three places to oil. These two spots here on the rails, on the back, and then one spot here on the, what we call the connector. And that's where it's going to oil the whole rail once you slide it in there. And then also it's going to lubricate everything on the inside of the trigger assembly for this gun. And like I said, just because I showed you how to do it on this gun, it's not going to be the same as this, as this Ruger. Okay, this one's going to have different places to oil, but read that owner's manual, figure that out. Now we were laughing about it earlier. It's like, yeah, just get on YouTube. You'll figure it out. Not everybody on YouTube knows what they're doing. <laughs> okay, so we're not perfect. They're not perfect. Unless it's like, say, a Glock rep or a Ruger guy that's saying, okay, this is how you clean this model of gun. Don't listen to your everyday uh, shooter that's on, on YouTube. Anybody can have a YouTube channel. It doesn't make them a genius. Okay, so just remember that. Take it with a grain of salt. I usually watch three to four videos, and usually I get the, the yeah, right. Yeah, get the main idea <laughs> and how to do it. Get the main gist of it, uh, and, and that usually helps. So, so lastly, like we said, lightly oil those. Um, and then keep them in a dry area. If you're going to be keeping them in a safe, um, they make dehumidifiers. They make uh, things that you can put in your safe to keep keep the humidity down. Um, I know I've I have I've had safes in garages before where it's not as good uh, temperature control, and so I've had to kind of keep keep things in there to keep rust from happening on my guns. Uh, but if you can keep a safe in a house where it's temper con temperature controlled, it's going to be a lot easier to keep the rust off. Of and the Glocks, of course, they've got a coating on them. They don't rust much. These are aluminum and stainless. If you have a blued gun, try not to leave it in a case. If you leave it in a case, it can trap moisture in there. And then in three months, you open up the case and your gun's all rusty. You get little spots all over it. Mm -hmm. So try not to leave them in a case. The best place, of course, is safe. Have a gun safe. Exactly. Um, and, and if you do have to leave them in a, in a, in a case, definitely oil them down pretty well. Some people will actually even put a rod in there with an oily rag on the end of it, just to kind of keep even more oil in there to keep it from keep it from rusting. Anything that you can do to, to slow that process down. Metal always is trying to get back to its original state, which is ferrous essentially, and it and it and it's going to rust. That's what it's trying to do all the time. So we're trying to keep that from happening. You know, the main thing about it is is use common sense. Um, a lot of people get lazy when it comes to, even though I laugh, Rob laughs at me for how I clean my guns. I am very, uh, very aware of how my guns are when they come off the range. I definitely want to check them, make sure checking all parts, make sure there's nothing broken um, uh, before you get to the, the range the next time, obviously. Um, 
And if I have any issues, if I can't fix them, I take them to a, a, a certified gunsmith. Um, it's very hard to find a good gunsmith nowadays for some reason, and everybody's buying guns. Uh, I would think somebody would want to get in the, into that business more so now that because there's so many guns running around. And, and, you know, if you have any comments about a specific type of gun, we've talked about doing an AR cleaning class or an AR type class, you know, that, that is, that's a whole class in itself. Um, we could sit down and talk all about, you know, cleaning a long range gun, which we're going to talk about that next class. But obviously we got to go over all the basics, but if you, if you all can talk, can put those comments in the, after the survey, you know, if you have any interest in this kind of stuff, let us know because we're we're here to help you guys. We're not doing as many in-person classes, so we want to bring it to you and uh, try to give get as much information out there as we can, and uh, hopefully help you all out in the future. And some of these, like I said, this one's fairly difficult to take. What's well, fairly difficult? It's not hard to take down. It's hard to put back together. You actually have to hold it at a forty-five and jiggle it. You get one little piece to match up down here. Um, a Walter P twenty-two. Well, I wouldn't suggest you take that apart a whole lot, especially the internal trigger parts. It's like a little bomb goes off and pieces go everywhere. <laughs> this one, have you done two or three of them? I have had several of these Rugers brought to me and people gave it to me in a coffee can with most of the parts there. Yeah. But it's it, if you're not used to working on stuff and working on guns, it can get frustrating because that little piece has to drop in there just right. Then you can't get the bar pushed up through there. You do them all the time. They've come easier, but like I said, I've had several guns come in coffee cans. So just just be aware that each gun is going to be a little different. Do your do your research essentially on what type of gun that you're going to need for what you're going to be doing. I know a lot of people are buying guns for self defense. Um, a lot of people are buying um, assault rifle type guns, which is fine. They're they're all different. They're all in their own little wheelhouse, I guess you could say. Um, but the main thing is. If it's the right tool for what you're going to be using it for, that's that's the main goal that we're going to be we're going to be looking for. If you ever shoot lead, which I don't suggest it, lead bullets through center fire rifle, center fire handguns, it's gonna it actually builds up lead on the end of the cylinder, and when you're in a single action or double action, when you go to pull it back, the cylinder will actually just start having just build up and just hitting on there and having friction, and you can literally not do the rotate the cylinder anymore with lead. There's still some lead rounds out there. Mm -hmm. I try to stay away from them. We had some for a class one time and yeah, I cleaned forever to get the mm -hmm. cylinder clean. And the lead also shaves off. It's just, I'd stay away from just solid lead bullets. And most of them are gonna have some type of a copper coating on them and, and they're gonna be a little bit better for shooting. And like I said, some of these are, some of the ammo he's talking about are kind of old school type ammo, but you may still see that around. And some people may reload that. A lot of your cowboy action shooters, mm -hmm. they'll use lead bullets uh, with some of these single action guns, uh, just because they're cheaper. They make their own bullets, they're pretty easy to make. And, um, and for that, but like you said, there's a lot more cleaning and involved in that. 22s, they're just inherently, the powder's nasty, a lot of carbon. You can shoot your 22 and it's just gonna quick shoot, it's just gonna start jamming. And malfunctioning you're gonna to have to go in there and clean all that carbon out of there yeah, and this so one even breaks down further but right i'm not gonna do it today <laughs> I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> but yeah so that's another thing another good point to make is that if you're on if you're on the range and something happens with your gun and it's misfiring it could be one of two things it could be the ammunition okay or it could be because your gun just is jammed up with with what he's saying carbon buildup copper buildup whatever lead all those kinds of things can make a difference so you know take that gun off the range or or take it apart clean it out a little bit and and then put it back in in, uh, in action but the main thing is just just knowing your gun read up about it learn about it and then just have experienced people help you with it if you need to um, you can call us uh, or you can like i said we don't recommend getting on youtube and listen watching all the videos but there are some pretty good informational videos on on youtube about uh, different types of guns that are out there yeah, I did look at some actually today where I come over on a Smith and Wesson shield and he took it apart wrong. Well, against what the manual says, <laughs> and then he pulls the trigger, the slide just comes right off. And that's not how you're supposed to take it apart. So there is a right way and a wrong way for some things. Just from you know, like Matt said, remember on YouTube, they may or may not really know. 
Mm -hmm. we, we've both been to multiple Glock armor schools, which we go every so many years, every three years, we have the armor to yep. tear down a Glock. And Glocks are very, very simple. Yeah, like, like I said, you've got the, the grip, the lower end of it, the barrel, the slide, the screw. I mean, that's essentially all that you, you can take apart. Now, of course, we can take it apart more so. We can take the trigger out and all the different internal parts, but they're really only like about 20, 22, 23 parts in a Glock. Not too many, maybe 20. And Glocks are would you say they're the easiest to take apart? I mean, you take it apart in a couple of seconds? Yeah, I mean, compared to most guns, they all try to be like Glock in one way or another, how they take them apart. Now, they're not the most finesse gun. They're, they're not for uh, precise shooting per se, but you pull the trigger and they go off. That's really what they're used for. Uh, Self-defense, military type situations, they're good. And, for, and of course, police as well. So, uh, but yeah, they're a very simple gun. The tighter your tolerances, um, Berettas, I know when I went through the academy, there was a, another sheriff's department that had Berettas, that had very tight tolerances, very accurate handguns. They had to clean their guns almost every time we shot down there. We never even cleaned our Glocks. Yeah, there was a there was an instructor at the academy that actually had fired close to a thousand rounds through a nine millimeter. Now we don't recommend this, but he was testing that Glock to see how long it would shoot before it would misfire or malfunction. And he had shot over a thousand rounds in that and had yet, had yet to misfire. It was a nine millimeter Glock. I think it was Glock 17 model. So just keep that in mind that every gun's going to be a little different. Some are more finicky than others. Some jam up quicker. That's just part of, you know, things that are mechanical and humans make them. They're going to mess up. So, uh, you know, look for good brands. Uh, do your research. Read that owner's manual. Don't just throw it out, okay? Look at that owner's manual, learn about your gun before you start cleaning it or, or using it. And uh, that way you'll be a lot safer and have your gun for a lot longer. And the copper in the barrel, I know you can't probably see that. On the end of that patch, it's actually blue. That's that copper eating away at the cup, the solvent eating away at the copper. Yeah. So if you keep cleaning and it keeps coming out blue, you still got copper. Yep. Yeah. So definitely a good cleaner for, for getting copper out. The CLP will not do that. It will just clean it and add a little bit of oil to it and then you wipe it out and that's pretty much it. But it will get some of it, but not all of it for sure. Any questions, Mimi? So still no questions. No, still no, still no questions. Um, right. We can, if, if anyone does have a question, go ahead and, and ask it through the question and answer. Otherwise, I will say thank you to the two of you. For those who have joined us this evening, you will receive in the next few days a survey, um, and it will have uh, a question about what you might be interested in for future classes. So as Matt mentioned, if you're interested in cleaning specific types of guns, such as an AR-15, that would be um, something we'd like to know. I noticed there were a few ladies in the class tonight. so. Um, we appreciate all the different types of shooters that there are out there. Um, the three of us uh, from Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency um, all enjoy just sport shooting too. So um, we can relate with the hunting side of it and then just um, a little plinking. <laughs> Not one mile plinking, Rob, but <laughs> thank you all for joining us. If you're joining